That was heavier than I remember it being. This, as you may or may not be aware, was my old air compressor. And if you've not already seen, I replaced it a little while back with a new ultra quiet one, which I'll talk about on a separate video. Um, if you're wondering how I'm getting on with that one, it's okay. I'm happy enough with it. Not unhappy enough to warrant sending it back, but not 100% over the moon with it. As I say, I'll do another video on it. It's, it's fine. But this little baby, if you're not familiar with air compressors, you need to be a little bit careful with old ones. And I was given this second hand and I didn't know any of the history behind it, whether it had been properly maintained, whether the tank was regularly drained and all that sort of thing. And there are kind of horror stories out there on the internet of tanks exploding and various other things. I've heard mixed reports on that. A lot of people say, you know, if it's gonna go, it'll just be some sort of hairline fracture leak, and it's very unlikely to have a catastrophic explosion. But it was time for an upgrade, and I certainly wouldn't give this away now. It's too old, I don't know anything about the history of it, and it's just not worth the risk. But I figured, let's have a look inside it and see what state the tank is actually in. As I say, it's an old Airmaster compressor, model number 9 EPA, serial number 3576. I'm assuming that's maximum working pressure, 150 PSI. Check oil and drain air receiver daily. Yeah, right, I bet that's never happened. Over on the other side of it, well, it's got a date tested here, so I think this is the closest thing we've got to a manufacture date on it. 14th of June. 1982 so you know it's best part of 37 years old it's just not worth taking the risk of trying to maintain it or keep it any longer what does it say on here we've got a part number hide test psi 225 presumably i don't know what the hide is presumably they've tested it up to 225 psi as i say 1982 bss class 3 grade e Design pressure is 150 PSI. Minimum design temperature is minus 10. And we've got another different serial number, 9426. So you can see this is an old belt driven compressor. We've got the motor up here, quite a beefy motor on it. And then we've got the belt drive, this main kind of flywheel assembly. And we've got the air filter up here. I'll show you the air filter, not very exciting. It's actually not that bad, the air filter. Well. We'll see if it actually works. There's so many things wrong with this. It's not worth maintaining. I mean, apart from we don't know what state the actual tank's in. And I know we could take the end off and shove some sort of camera in or something, but it's temperamental as to whether or not it starts. The pressure regulator's not working properly. I wouldn't like to guarantee the pressure release valve even works properly. 37 years old. See if we can run it one last time. Yeah, it's working. It's hissing a bit, but... The poor drain valve seems to just constantly leak and hiss, but I mean, to be fair, that's probably just a dodgy washer. Just a, or well, the O-ring or whatever it is. I mean, you can often get lime scale and corrosion and all sorts on your drain valve O-ring. Um, I mean, the O-ring itself seems to be all right but it's probably corrosion up inside the tank. I'll get a better idea of that when we take it to bits. First thing I want to do, I'm going to try and turn it on its side without like destroying my workbench. And we'll mark up where I'm going to cut it. 
give it a bit of a clean up so I can actually write on it. So you can see the original seam of the tank along here, but of course any water sitting in the tank would have sat, you know, around this sort of area, around where the drain plug is. So I want to get this section, but I'd like to have a look at this seam as well, so I'd like to get that section off. So I think if I can kind of cut up here, all the way down past the seam, kind of along here, not quite sure what I'll do with the wheels. I'll have to cut these off. Actually, no, forget that. We'll leave the wheels there. I'm not going to make life awkward. Let's just, we'll cut it here. And we'll come up to about there. That should do it. So we'll try and take out this whole kind of section. And we'll have a look at what state the bottom of the tank is and what state this seam is in. Goodbye, my trusty air master. You have served me well. In the interest of science, you're getting cut open. So there we go, there's the bottom of my uh, compressor and um, what I've done here, you can see there's the drain valve there and what I've done, I've just ground away a bit here and a bit here just to kind of see how deep the pitting goes. You can see the rust on the inside because if you imagine that would sit like that and this is where water is just going to gather. And it is, I mean, it's hard to say what it's treated with, I don't, I don't know. It's treated in some sort of way. Uh, it doesn't look like paint, but someone who's like an expert with metal would be able to tell us what that's treated with. But you can see the rust's pretty bad. The seam itself looks absolutely fine, but around this bottom area towards the drain valve, it's pretty bad. And what I've tried to do, you can see the pitting in the steel and I've, on this edge, I've ground it down as far as I can 
to where there's basically no pitting anymore. So you can see on this side, I've ground it down, but there's still loads of pitting. So we haven't reached the bottom of the rust on this side. On this side, obviously water's gonna gather around here and it's gonna go out this drain hole here. But you can see the, the pitting and everything around there. Around that edge, I've ground it down just to the level below the pitting or just so that you can't see any pitting anymore. And I think the interesting thing first of all is going to be to find out how thick the metal is there versus how thick the metal is in a nice clean bit here. Get me calipers out. Still haven't bought any digital ones. This is one of these slightly tricky because of the curve of the metal. If I can't get a good measurement here I'll have to go to the other end. Uh, it's too rusty up here to measure and I want to get a nice measurement on a, on a clean bit of metal. We've got no kind of um, shards sticking over the edges to influence it. So I think that's pretty much as new thickness. Let's have a look. That is as near as damn it to three millimeters. I would say 3.04 millimeters. Let me write that down. Now let's check this edge here where I've ground away the the pitting. We'll have a look inside the tank in a minute. I'll show you inside the tank, but this is the worst bit really. Which is to be expected, because it's where the water's gonna gather. Okay, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not great. We're down to two point about 2.4, 2.4 mil. We've lost 0.64 of a millimetre, which is, we've lost about 21% of the thickness of the metal around this part of the tank. Now, this is probably the worst area, probably. I'll grind this away as well. We'll have a quick look under this bit and see what's going on, see if there's any cracks or anything, but there, there didn't seem to be. The, it's not obviously cracked right through on the other side or anything, you know. But we'll have a look because we've got a weld here. So 21%, not bad for nearly 40 year old tank. As I say, not something I would even give away to the local maker space or anything like that. It's not a good idea. If we've lost 21% of the thickness of the steel, you know, it's designed to certain tolerances for a reason. If you just dismiss that and ignore it and say, oh, it'll be fine. You're in a bit of a dangerous position if it does explode. That's my fire prevention board. So, there's no cracks or anything that I can see, but the pitting, wow, the pitting is really bad. It's hard to say, it might actually be worse around here than it was here. So, it's very possible that we've lost more than 20% of the thickness of the steel. But, as I say, I can't see any cracks. The weld is about here-ish. Can't see any cracks around there. Let's have a look. We're about, probably out to about there. Can't see anything, but it's not great. It's probably got another 20 years left in it. But is it worth the risk? If you give it away to someone and it explodes in their garage or in their face, it's not worth the risk. I'll show you inside the main tank as well. It's interesting how much corrosion we've got on the top of the tank. Not entirely sure why that is. There's hardly any down here on the sides. 
it's not much on the end, but at the, this is the top of the tank. I guess it's just where it, the condensation builds up and then presumably rains back down into the bottom of the tank. I, I don't know. Not a lot to report. It's not bad. Nowhere near as bad as the bottom of the tank, obviously. The biggest concern for me is around the joints where the couplers link into the tank. So where like the pressure relief valve and the actual air, main air incomer, where that connects in, it's really heavily corroded around those points uh, there, there and that coupler up the top there. And the, what do you call it, an inspection hole thing at the end, that's really, really corroded as well. Um, the seam isn't bad, not terrible, but not great. I'll show you down inside this section of the tank as well. You'll see it's just similar to what you've already seen on the other bottom section, really. Nothing to write home about. Very difficult to see if there's any cracks without grinding the corrosion away. But as I say, she's had a good innings. It's time to go to Compressor Heaven off to the scrapyard. At some point, hopefully in the not too distant future, I'm gonna take the pump to bits and show you what's inside it. If you've ever wondered what's inside a compressor pump and how it works. So don't forget to hit subscribe for the minute. Thank you once again for watching. If you do have an old compressor, if you could pop in the comments below, I don't know what the official lifespan of a compressor is. I have looked around and I've seen everything ranging from five years to like people having vintage compressors and all sorts of things. So um, what is the recommended lifespan of a compressor tank? I don't know. Pop in the comments below, let us know what you think. I certainly think this has had its day. It has served me well over the years and it's time to go off and get melted down to make some new baby compressors. Thank you once again for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye.